Thank you, Savannah. Tonight it is the calm before the storm on the Carolina coast before Hurricane Florence hits. NBC Charlotte photojournalist Stuart Pittman shot this video this morning on Wrightsville Beach right when the sun was coming up over the water. Brad, things will be very different very soon on the coast. Yeah, especially in those areas between Wilmington and areas up towards Carteret County there around Moorhead City, Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. Tonight we've had some scattered showers across the area. Now these showers not associated with Florence tonight, but it's important to keep an eye on these showers in the next couple of days because they will likely add to the problem. If they help saturate the soil ahead of time as the rains from Florence move in, that could make the flooding threat actually increase as it gets closer. Now tonight I was watching the Hurricane Hunters do their pass through the storm tonight and we told you earlier that the pressure came up a little bit, but that was an indication of an eye wall replacement cycle. What happens in these very strong hurricanes? One eye wall shrinks down in a new one forms. That's why it's very difficult for even intense hurricanes to maintain their strength. They go through this cycle quite a bit where they kind of ebb and flow and tonight we've seen that where we've seen it weaken temporarily, but it's likely going to re-strengthen tomorrow and we're starting to see that new eye wall kind of take over. Notice how the brighter colors, the, the dark blacks and the whites, which are indicating cold uh, cloud tops, went away for a while, but now they're coming back and they're wrapping around the center of circulation there. You could see a very healthy looking storm now. There was a little bit of a push on the, on the right side there, but that's gone away. There is good news though, at least for the Western Carolinas. We're starting to see that little bit of a northwesterly movement. The further north this gets before it approaches the coast, the more likely it's going to move further to our east, and that's bad news for eastern North Carolina in the Outer Banks, but better news for the Charlotte area. So these are my updated graphics for the rainfall totals, and I, I think I'm still underestimating the amount of rain here. This is pretty conservative, but it's really kind of uncertain on where the actual track will go. Two to four inches back in here, four to eight. I'll show you an actual rainfall forecast in a minute, but this area in extreme rainfall, we could see a 200 year rainfall event. That's almost 15 inches of rain in just four to five days. The winds, the strongest are shifting into the east more at landfall areas in eastern North Carolina. We'll see extreme uh, catastrophic winds. It will destroy a lot of homes in that part of the state. For us, we're still going to see windy conditions, but we're looking at more the 30 to 40 mile per hour range. In fact, when we look at our, our chances for 40 mile per hour winds, these actually these numbers went down for Charlotte. Remember at six, I was showing the five o'clock advisory. Our chance of seeing 40 mile an hour winds was actually around 51%. It's dropped to 39. That's the indication that the track has shifted a little farther away. But notice the entire state of North and South Carolina at least has some chance of seeing tropical storm force winds as we go towards Friday night and even into Saturday. Now, what about hurricane force winds? You're probably going to say these numbers should be higher. Well, even though we're expecting a category four at landfall, there's still uncertainty on the track. So these numbers are kind of hedging that a little bit. Notice how much lower they are to the west. We're not likely going to see hurricane force winds here. Here, maybe a gust. There's an outside chance of that, but you see really the bulk of the wind is going to be to the east. An important factor in this storm is going to be the width or diameter of the storm. It will actually grow in size, so it approaches the coast. It'll be 300 miles wide. Now, if this came barreling into the state at 40 miles an hour, those winds would move all the way back into our area, but because it's moving slow, that would allow the winds to weaken as it moves over land. Remember, it's going to take 48 hours to move from the coast and inland, so it's going to take a while. I uh, told you I'd show you some of these rainfall totals. These are unbelievable. 8 to 15 and that could be underdone, but notice how close we are to the heavy rain. That's why we can't let our guard down in Charlotte because uh, this track starts shifting back to the west or the system drifts this way after landfall. We could be more in that four to eight inch range, especially our eastern counties. We're going to have to watch that carefully. Quick look at the surface map. That stalled front will keep rain around us tomorrow and even into uh, Wednesday into Thursday, but then we should have a dry day on Thursday afternoon before the front and the system approaches. That is Florence that'll bring us the heavy rain going into Friday into Saturday. What a mess that will be once it moves in. The seven day forecast still has some uncertainty there at the end. We are going to see showers and thunderstorms every single day. Thursday might be the dry day. If you've ever been around hurricanes the day before the storm, you get sinking air and sometimes that's the best weather before the system moves in. But by the weekend, we will feel those impacts Friday, Saturday into Sunday, Fred. Okay, thank you, Brad.